So you finally saved up a roll of Tezos and are looking to start your own baker, but don't know where to start? My name is Billy and I'm from Canadian Bacon. I'm gonna show you how I upgraded my Raspberry Pi Baker to an i7 NUC, easily using BakeBuddy software. I'm using a Intel 11th generation NUC, a Ledger Nano S wallet, an NVMe hard drive, and some RAM. Don't forget to have plenty of coffee when you're doing this. As you can see here, the NUC is about the size of an Apple TV. It's nice and small and compact. Uh, it doesn't use that much energy, doesn't use that much electricity. And inside the box, you get a standard power adapter. And I was surprised, it even comes with this VESA mount that you could apply to the back of the NUC and then attach the NUC to the back of a monitor. So what you're gonna need is a star screwdriver here and just unscrew these four screws in the back and that's gonna get you access to the main board so that you can install your SSD, that's your hard drive that you're gonna install, um, in my case, Ubuntu on, as well as the Bake Buddy software and your RAM, which I recommend, I recommend at least 16 gigs of RAM. When I started off with my Raspberry Pi, I could get away with eight gigs, but as the network upgrades, eight gigs is not going to cut it. So I, I recommend at least 16. We're going for the overkill. So this is 64 gigs of RAM and um, any NVMe hard drive should do. Once again, we go big at Canadian Bacon, and this is, uh, this what is this? This is the same drive that's in a PlayStation 5. It's like the latest uh, latest version, Gen 4. Um, and oh yeah, and for space, I recommend at least, uh, at this point, 500 gigabytes. Once again, we overkill it with a two terabyte drive, but hey, you never know. Here's a good look inside the NUC. Um, as you can see, it's got, it takes those uh, laptop RAM sticks. So they overlap onto each other here when you put them in. And your NVMe drive would plug in there. And you can see on top, it comes with a bit of a heat sink that once it's applied on, it can disperse some of the heat that's created. Now let's put this thing together. Here's our little hard drive here. You can see it's it's almost a, it's smaller than a, a, a stick of RAM. And what you'll need to do is first unscrew this little screw here using a, a smaller screwdriver that you used before. And then the hard drive just slides in like so in the back there. And I'll show you the finished result. Okay, as you can see, we have the NVMe drive in snugly as so. So now we're going to install the RAM. These are the RAM sticks. I've got two of them here. So first you put in the bottom one. I think it goes in like this. So don't be afraid to put some applied pressure. I know it seems like it's going to break, but should try putting a CPU in a socket. That's even more sketchy. So, there you go. There you go, that's what it should look like once it's all done and you have all the components in there. You got the NVMe right there and you got the two sticks of RAM there running in dual channel so it should be nice and fast. So now let's just put it back together. And there you go, that's it. The hardware is all set up. Now you just have to plug it in and install your operating system.
So first we're going to navigate to the Ubuntu website and download the latest version of LTS desktop. We're going to download the AMD 64 bit version of it. We're also going to download and install uh, Etcher, which is uh, a way of making a bootable USB drive. So you're going to download Etcher and load up the software. You're going to point the image that you just downloaded from the Ubuntu website. So your version of Ubuntu AMD 64 and then select the USB thumbstick thumb drive that you're going to install on and then flash it. It's going to do its thing. You're going to have to put in your password depending on the operating system you're using and it'll flash the little thumb drive, have it ready to go to boot in and install Ubuntu on your NUC. So just place that USB stick in your NUC and fire it on. Right now I have my NUC connected to my television set that I'm using as a temporary monitor. Uh, later, once everything is installed, I will run this in headless mode and use SSH on my laptop to log into the NUC and install the Bake Buddy software. So go through the software installation process, just like any other operating system, you're going to put in your, your user information, your location information, and install it to the hard drive. Once that's done, you can reboot, or it should reboot itself, and you'll have access to the Ubuntu desktop. Now, the next steps of me installing BakeBuddy software, you could install that on Ubuntu as you're logged in using your monitor, or you can log into the NUC using SSH and install it that way. That's how I'm going to be working with my uh, baker is I'm going to be monitoring it and updating it through SSH on my MacBook and um, and I'll show you how you can check it and make sure that everything is running smoothly once we're done the installation. Okay now we're going to install the BakeBuddy software following the BakeBuddy installation guide posted on GitLab and I will provide the links down in the uh, comments below. Now, first thing you want to do is either if you're working off of your Ubuntu machine, you can press Control Alt T to open a terminal window. Or in my case, I'm working off my Mac. Um, just search for terminal, load it up. I will be logging in through SSH. And for me to do the so, I have to have the computer's username at the internal IP address where that computer is connected to my router. Now I simply found that IP address using my router's software and I found the device on the network and that's how I got the IP address. If you're using uh, the machine, the Ubuntu machine, then you don't need to SSH in. So first things first, we're gonna download and copy BakeBuddy to the appropriate folder. On the installation guide, there is a link to the AMD64 version as well as an ARM64 version if you're using a Raspberry Pi. We're going with the AMD64 version, so I'm just copying this, this little command line here, pasting it in, and letting it do its thing. So it's downloading the correct packages and it's moving them onto the appropriate folder on my baker. Now the next step here is doing the actual install and setup. So we're going straight up onto mainnet. I'm not gonna be testing this. So I'm copying this command here, uh, bb-cli, so the command line version of Big Buddy, setup-a. And you'll be prompted for your password many times while you do these commands. Um, you also may have to put sudo in front of the command for it to allow you to be super user to run these commands. So let it do its thing. The next step is to bootstrap the node, which basically means you're downloading a copy of the blockchain to put on your computer. And that's what we're essentially doing. We're synchronizing it with the block and verifying everything. 
So in this case, uh, you want to copy and paste this uh, this string of uh, of command line um, bb dash cli bootstrap node dash dash tarball or just copy and paste it directly from the guide. Let it go, and this one will take some time as it's downloading uh, it's downloading a snapshot of the node. So let it do its thing. Give it a bit. And now we're going to finally start the node. To do so, you want to put in this command line. So sudo bb-cli start, and that's going to start the system. Now, this next line, you want to remember this because you're periodically going to use this to check on the status of your baker. And that's bb-cli info. And that just gives you a uh, idea of what's going on with your baker, whether or not your, your node is synced up um, or not. So just check that, see everything's okay. So the next step is importing the ledger's address. So at this point, you want your ledger nano plugged in. You wanna make sure that your uh, ledger is set up for working as a baker. And in that case, you have to go into your ledger live software go into where you download your software and go into it, set it at experimental mode so that you can download the Baker app. So you want to have that Baker app running. You want to have your ledger hooked to your device. So I just put in bb-cli import key and I import my key in. Now this next step is for if this is your first time baking, you need to register your baker with mainnet. Now, because I am upgrading hardware, moving to a different piece of hardware from the Pi, I'm already registered in. So I'm gonna be skipping the step, but don't forget to copy this command line in to make sure that your baker is registered and uh, will show up on various explorers. Now, last but not least, you want to authorize the ledger device to bake for your address. So this final string, you want to paste this in, bb-cli setup-ledger-main-hwm1. So just copy and paste that in, let it do its thing. And once it's done, it may take some time, but you want to periodically check bb-cli info to see whether you're sync or not. So it's, it, it'll, take, it'll take some time, but once it is in sync, then you are baking, my friend. And there you have it. With BakeBuddy, baking Tezos is as easy as raspberry pie. Keep in mind, at the time of this recording, software versions may have changed or installation methods may have also deviated. So always take a look at the GitLab link for BigBuddy software for any of these changes, or come to the Discord channel where many of us are there to help you install BigBuddy. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more baking tutorials to come. As always, I'm Billy at Canadian Bacon. Take care, eh?